In this demo video of a finite extensional model, we'll be constructing an interpretation that renders this argument invalid. Premise one, uh, the translation of this uh, is pretty straightforward. It's very similar to what we looked at before. Uh, the only difference is here, the universals on the inside or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I focus on the hxy. This says some specific a h's everything. Now notice that I'm not using the letters x and y in my translations. Your translations cannot use x and y because x and y are meaningless. You need to reinterpret them in terms of the universe or the predicates. Some specific a h's everything. Now everything means uh, everything in the UD, in the universe of discourse. But you don't need to type that part out or write it out if you don't want to. These translations are notes for you. They're like your problem-solving notes. They're just to help you understand what's going on. Now when we look at premise two, this is of a reverse form where I have the universal followed by the existential. So of course we know what that means. That means the existential is generic. So this is H, X, Y. So the X is the B. Uh, which is the everything, and the y is the generic something. So what I'm going to say is uh, every b h is some generic thing. So it's not a specific particular thing. Every b just has to h something. Now premise 3 doesn't really need a translation, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Like on a, on a test, if you're trying to save time, you wouldn't bother. But this just says c is a b. Okay, how exciting. b c means c is a b. What I'm going to do for the, con for the conclusion is I actually don't want to bother translating the conclusion. What I really want to translate is the negation of the conclusion. The reason why is because it's easier, at least for me, it's easier in my mind to set things true than it is to set things false. So if I want the conclusion to be false, that's of course equivalent to saying I want the negation of the conclusion to be true. So what I'm going to do is I'll, symbolize, or I'll translate the negation of the conclusion, and obviously that just means I'm essentially taking away that negation. And now that just says all Bs do not H themselves. I'm going to start with the universe of discourse uh, of 0 and 1 just to start. Then I need an A1 predicate. I need a B1 predicate. I also need my uh, H2 predicate. And finally, I need the name letter. Name letters and abbreviation schemes are defined. And what we're doing is we're essentially creating an abbreviation scheme. So that's C. But of course, we know that name letters have the superscript of 0. So that's that. All of these things are sets except for the name letter. A name letter isn't a set. A name letter doesn't pick out a set of things. It just picks out a thing, an individual. The name letter is by far the easiest place to start. You just need to fix the name letter so that it picks out some individual in your universe. So arbitrarily, I'm just going to pick that C is just 0. If you had picked 1, that's totally fine. And a name letter refers to something in your universe. No set brackets around it. It just picks out 0. And now what does this mean about B? Well, C is a B means automatically I have that. Done. That takes care of that. I no longer need to look at premise 3. I can sort of just make some notes to myself. This one is actually not a bad place to start. All Bs do not H themselves. Notice I have 0 here. So immediately, because I have 0 as a B, I know that what cannot be an H2. So I can make a little list. So I can say no to 0, 0. Okay? Why? Because if 0, 0 was an H2, then B would H itself. But it says here all Bs do not H themselves. So no matter what, I cannot put 0, 0 into this. And that's a nice handy note. So every B has to H some generic thing. Well, if I can't H 0, 0, then I have to H the other thing in my universe, which is 0, 1. So, so far, that looks good. Some specific A H is everything in the universe of discourse. Well, again, whenever you have specific things, uh, you can just specify arbitrarily what you want it to be. So I'm going to start with 0, so I can let my A be 0. And then it has to H everything in the universe of discourse. My universe of discourse is 0 and 1. So that means A has to H 0, and A has to H 1. Well, if I look here, 0 already h is 1, so I could just put 0, 0 in this, and that would satisfy the first premise. Now, I'm going to point out that the order doesn't matter. You don't have to have this in some fancy order. It's just whatever 
order you put it in. Now if you've been paying attention, you clearly realize I've done something wrong. I put 0, 0 in here when I know that I'm not allowed to put 0, 0 in here, so I've made a mistake. And you should also see that this mistake is unfixable, given my current layout, because if a1, if my specific a, is 0, I have to h everything, which means I have to put 0, 0 in. So the way to fix this is you go and you just change one of the specific things and we see what we can do. Now I'll change it to 1 and so my specific A is 1. I don't know why I'm writing it that way, whatever. Uh, and that would mean that my A, my 1, has to H everything in the universe of discourse. So it ha my 1 has to H 0 and my 1 has to H 1. So I'll put 1 0, comma, 1 1. Now, premise 1 is true, premise 2 is still true, every b h is some generic thing, 0 does h 1, c is a b, that's trivially true, and all b's do not h themselves. I made that true by making sure there's no 0, 0. If I added other things to a and b, it might sort of screw this up, uh, so the best thing to do now is just close it. I've satisfied everything uh, so that all three premises are true, and the negation of the conclusion is true which of course means the original conclusion is false, I have indeed shown invalidity.